Let's turn our Bibles to Philippians, book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. The title of the message is, Why Worry? Why Worry? Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. The Bible says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? Mm -hmm. Because what you've done on Calvary Cross, that we can gather here. And we thank you so much for sealing us with the Holy Ghost, where we don't have to doubt where we're going. Uh, help each and one of us to live a life that is uh, fruitful for your glory and honor. And there are many cares of this world, Lord God, but help us to just focus on you and help us to just lean on you and rely on you. Uh, we ask you that you'll fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Helping to preach your word with power and authority. Amen. Give him the liberty to speak your words. And open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us to take in your word, Lord God, with all sincerity. Please protect us from devil's attacks. And pray that you'll be the only one who receives the glory and honor. Yes, Lord. We thank you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Why worry? You know, as Christians, that's one thing that should not characterize you. You, know, you shouldn't be a person that worries. It's a common characteristic of a human being to worry worry about different things. Some people worry about finances. Some people worry about health. Some people worry about mental issues. But people do worry. And as Christians, it's no different. Unfortunately, for many Christians, their worry consumes their lives. Your life is not fully you know, fruitful and in serving Jesus Christ, because you're just full of worry. Even though you read Bible verses, you know, our text verse, Philippians 4, 19, it says, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, which is a promise. I mean, God's promise that he will provide your need. But you don't trust it. Go back to Philippians 4, 11. Bible says, not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Are you content right now? Are you a person of contentment? A lot of times people are not content because they're worrying. They're worrying about something in their lives. Even though God has promised you, even though there are many verses in the Word of God that promises that God will provide and supply all your need. We have Romans 8.28, right? Let's turn to Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28. We've got to look at a few verses. Romans 8.28. The Bible says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. So, Bible says that as a saved person, everything that's happening in your life is for what? It's all working good. It's all going to meet at a straight line, and it's going to be for his purpose. And sometimes you go through hardships, and first thing you do is you start committing sin. It's like a trigger. Like Christians, no different. As a human being, you're addicted to something. I mean, we, 
Don't you wish you're addicted to just reading the Word of God, witnessing, you know, living a clean and pure, holy life, you know, hate evil, right? Hate Bible characters, always speaking up. You know, maybe, you know, you and I will be at that point someday. However, as Christians, as a Bible believer, so-called, you're addicted to sin. That's why you can never fully immerse in verses like Romans 8, 28, Philippians 4, 19, where God says he will supply all your need, but you start worrying because of your sin problems. Unless you resolve your sin problems, you will always, always be a person of worry. How can you have a peace of mind? How can you be trusting wholeheartedly when you're addicted to sin? Devil will work in your life. And devil will use any opportunity for you to commit sin. Ultimately, it's up to you. However, he will tempt you and he will provide circumstance where you fall. Again, if you, once you start debating, you already started sinning. If you see sin, if you see any wickedness, just like Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil, you have to just run away when it comes to sin. You never want to dwell in it. You never want to think about it. You just say, that's against the word of God. That's sinning against God's holy temple. I'm running away. If it's happening at your home, when you're in your room by yourself, get out. Go somewhere where there are people, where you won't be by yourself. Go be in the light somewhere, right? A lot of things happen in darkness. What do you think, you know, kids close their door when they're in their middle school and high school, in college ages, and not share what's on their computer screens, on their phone, with their parents? Why? Because something's going on. You know, you can't lie. You, but you lie, though, right? Honestly. Whether you're a Christian, whether you're a non-Christian, whether you're a Bible believer, non-Bible believer, you lie. You lie to your parents. And that's because you have flesh. And that's because you're fearful. And that's because you're wicked. I mean, literally, you know, kids think that it's, you could fool anybody, especially, you know, middle school, high school, college kids, they're on top of the world. They know everything. I know more than you, mom. I know more than you, dad. I know more than you, teachers. I know more than you, pastor. I know more than you, you know, pastor's wife. I know more than you, anybody. And they do some wicked stuff, right? And then they're like, okay, let's clean the memory, right? And uh, you can't clean anything, right? Your phone has traces, your computer has traces, you know. I mean, ask, you know, you know, Brother Lee, who's the expert, right? You know, there's no way once you see something, search something, text something, it's on record somewhere. There's, I guess there's a cloud system somewhere, right? And then they'll be able to figure it out. That's why when there's like litigation, what do people do? Okay, I'm going to subpoena your phone record, your text record, right? And then they see, they're like, oh, you were texting this person. You were talking about, you know, this issue, and you say you didn't. You are talking about that issue. You say you didn't. You know, you're just a liar. And there are evidence. But you think that, you know, in human world, we have this kind of litigation going on. Do you think you could get away with those things with an almighty God? You think that just because you deceive your parents, you deceive other people, that you could deceive God? You can't and you won't. I mean, be not deceived. God is not mocked. God will not let you mock him, even though you try your best, even though you think that you've gotten away with it. God will make sure that you pay for it. 
because he's a fair God. I mean, he is a loving God, but he is also a terrible and fearful God who will send a soul to eternal lake of fire and burn there forever and ever because that soul did not do as what the Bible says. Because he is a fair God, he has to treat you fairly. Me, you, no difference. He will treat you and me fairly. If I commit sin, he'll deal with me accordingly. If you commit sin, he'll deal with you accordingly. It's just that there are people who get right with the Lord, repent, and become useful, or people who does not repent, who stay down, who backslide to oblivion, and never be used by God. So there are two types of people. You could be that one who's inevitable. You're going to fall. You're going to lie to God. You're going to lie to people. But just like prodigal son, you get right, and then you become fruitful, and you have no worry in the world because God has taken care of it. You put it in God's care, or you be the other crowd. Continue to hide in your sins, continue to be addicted to your sin, and continue to worry. Can you imagine? Because if you're saved, Holy Ghost lives in you, and you get that conviction each time you sin. And you know because you read the Word of God, you listen to preaching, you did Bible study, you reap what you sow. And you know you're going to be punished one way or the other. You hope it's small amount. You reap what you sow and you get right with the Lord before it grows. That sin, that fruit grows. And you're worried constantly. That's because you have sin problem. There's no other way to explain it. Why do you worry? You worry because you have sin problem. If you're closer to God, if you have nothing to hide from God or any human being, because you have to be a good testimony example to other people as a witness for Jesus Christ, if you got nothing to hide, why do you worry? But you worry because you have something to hide. You have some sins that's going on in your life that you don't want people to see. Like I said, you could lie to me, you could lie to your parents, you could lie to your children, you could lie to anybody. Because you learn some little tricks in the internet and from people how to erase certain history. But that will never erase what really happened. Don't you think people want to go back in time and say, you know what, you know, I want to erase my sin. I want to erase my mistakes. But you can't. Why do you think that you could erase certain memories on your computer, on your phone, iPad, and you think you're okay? Don't you think God has all the record? Don't you think he will one day reveal it? Because if you don't get right with the Lord, if you don't confess your sins, if you don't get cleaned up, what Lord will eventually do was shine it. The sins that you're committing, sins that you're addicted to, you know, there's a, you're, you're playing in darkness. Maybe you're underneath that, you know, cloth or blanket, and you're hiding from everybody. However, the Lord's going to just reveal it. Reveal it to your parents, your siblings, you know, to the whole world. And you bring shame to the Lord's name, you bring bad testimony to your family. Not only that, number one, you bring, you know, bad testimony to the Lord Jesus Christ, where people will look at you and they'll be like, you know what, you're, you, you're so-called Christian, KJV believer, you know, going to Bible believing church, street preaching, witnessing, and you say you do all that, and I see your life, and you're full of sin, your hypocrisy, 
right? There's no way I, mean, I want to become a Christian. Don't you think when that happens, when that soul had opportunity to get saved, but because of your bad testimony, they reject Jesus Christ? How much punishment do you think you're going to get? God who sends a soul to hell forever? You think he's going to be like, oh, yeah, you're, you're my child, you know? Because of your bad testimony, that soul rejected Christ. Ultimately, it's their responsibility, but you had a hand in it. And they'll be like, and the God's going to be like, okay, it's okay. I'll give you more blessing after blessing after blessing. It doesn't work like that. You worry because you have sin problem. If you did not have a sin problem, you wouldn't worry. When you see some people, they're full of worries. Literally. You know, when they talk to their family, when they talk to their close friends, their conversation revolves around their worries, right? I mean, certain things, you do talk about it, right? Maybe you want unique counsel, you know, you want solution to it. You know, you have children problem, right? You know, you have job problem. You have many, many issues in your life. However, do you ever take it to the Lord? I mean, a lot of times, you want solution from human beings. You go to a human being to get solution. However, very few actually go to the Lord always to get solution. Why do you think you worry so much? Because you don't go to the Lord to get things right. You have sin problems you have to get right with the Lord. You have trust problems that you have to get right with the Lord. I mean, you don't trust the Lord. You know, isn't that amazing? Just like Israelites when they're in the wilderness, right? I mean, Lord God showed them sign after sign after sign, and they still couldn't trust the Lord. I mean, you know, when the spies, when they came back, you know, they're like dejected, complaining, you know, telling God why, you know, we're here. It would have been better if we're with the, you know, in bondage in Egypt, right? But same character shows Amongst Christians, you're like, you know, Lord, I'm never sorry that I got saved, but I wish I could just go back, you know. Maybe, you know, if I didn't know about King James Bible, if I didn't know about, you know, Bible Baptist Church International, my life wouldn't be this hard. I mean, you guys are laughing, but that's how people think. That's, how, that's why people leave the church. Man, before I knew about Bible Baptist Church International and learning this, you know, sound doctrine, you know, preaching against the liquor. I used to run a liquor store. Man, I was making good money. You know, I had no conscience where, you know, Holy Spirit was convicting me because I didn't know. So I sold it off, and I'm doing eight to five hard work, labor. The making payments are becoming hard. I wish I didn't know, and I wish I was before, where I didn't know about the right doctrine, right Bible, right Bible-believing church, you know, selling liquor without any, you know, conscience issues, and then living comfortably in this world. You know, people think like that. And people live like that. What do you think is their end, though? Do you think they're happier? If they go back to their old ways and start selling liquor, living comfortably, they think. But there's no peace. There's no spiritual peace in their lives. Then why you, as a Christian, so-called, who believes in the Word of God, want to go back? Why do you want to go back? Why do you want to go back to those, you know, sinful, comfortable ways? 
Do you think you'll ever get out of the state of worry? If you think you're comfortable physically, financially, mentally, it will never work out. Spiritual things against carnal things will always headbutts, always. That's why Bob Jones Sr. said it is never right to do wrong in order to do right. You cannot think that it's going to be all right by doing sin. It's never all right. Do you think I will bless a person who sells millions of dollars of worth alcohol and from that gives tithe to the ministry? God is not going to bless it. You sell drugs, you become a drug dealer, and then you make a lot of money, and then you give money to the church. Do you think God's going to bless it? No way. God doesn't care about your money. God doesn't care about what you can do. God only cares about your heart. It has to start from the right heart. You don't have right start. You don't have right heart. That's why you worry. There's like nothing to hide in this world. If you are clean, if you are, if you don't have anything to, you know, hide from somebody else. But unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world. Unfortunately, you know, Bible believers are not perfect. Unfortunately, you are not perfect. Thus, you constantly go back to your sin, and you live in worry. Again, there are triggers in your life. You have to watch out for those triggers. Just like people who's addicted to drugs, people who's addicted to whatever it is, smoking, right? You know, people who sleeps around with people, right? They have those triggers. Say, that trigger is whenever something hard happens in your life. Some people, they just go out of spiral. And as Christians, you're no different. Young kids, we'll start with them. Maybe some of them doesn't get into college that they wanted to. They just spiral down. They start meeting bad friends. They start doing drugs. You know, girls become pregnant, right? Guys become drug addicts and, you know, don't do anything. And they lose that time or period that they could do something for the Lord. Many of them go astray forever. But some do come back. But how much time have you lost? Because you couldn't get right because you couldn't resist that trigger. For adults, say you have, you, you know, you're married and you have a fight with your spouse, right? Does that mean that that gives you an opportunity and right to start committing sin? Because some of you do. Unfortunately, you have a fight with your spouses, right? Whether you have a fight with your husband or whether you have a fight with your wife. And when you fight, you do some wicked things, right? You, you leave the house, go to a bar, drink some, hide your sin, right? You do drugs, you start meeting people online using stupid apps, and then you hide all the record and act like nothing happened in your life. But many of you guys think that you're getting away with it, but God is just waiting. God's just waiting for the perfect timing. God's giving you that chance to get right with the Lord before he reveals it to your spouse, reveals it. 
Think about it. As a human being, especially when two people become one from a different background, you know, different families, you know, inevitably there's going to be fights, right? It's, it's normal. It's natural. But you shouldn't use that opportunity as a source, as a right, as a you know, trigger to start committing sin. If you're, you're a husband, or if you're a wife, you know, when you're fighting, do you want your spouse to be dead? Some people do. Yeah? Some people are like, man, I hope, I hope you're dead. I hope you're not in front of me, right? Like, or you'll say harsher things, right? You know, and I, I wish I'd never married you. Right? Why do you say search certain things? I mean, where's that promise when you guys got married? Till death do us apart. I mean, there's no backbone in this country. There's no backbone with the Bible believers either, or so called Christians. You have like no standard, right? And like if some little hardship comes, you start blaming on everybody, you start blaming God, and you start just worrying, and then you have self-pity. I mean, that is not a Bible believer character. That is not something that you should be showing regularly, or even once, one bit. And it all happens. Why? Because you're addicted to sin. You're addicted to your stubbornness. You're addicted to your pride. You don't like to humble yourself before an almighty God because you have to be right always. I'm a man. I'm the wife. I'm the child. I am right. You can never admit it at first, right? If you can admit it at first, you're not going to admit second, third, fourth, fifth until catastrophic thing happens in your life. But that's the sad part about being a human being. That sad part about you, you have to wait until some catastrophic thing to happen to really change. Why is that? Because you're addicted to sin. Because you don't get right with the Lord on a daily basis. And that leads to you being worrisome, worry hog, right? I mean, I don't know. Some Debbie Downers and wet blankets are just like that, right? You know, that's their way of living. But some Debbie Downers and wet blankers are like that because they just worry all the time. They're worried about, I wonder what that person would think. Stop worrying about what other people think. Stop only worrying about what Lord Jesus Christ thinks about you. Right. If Lord Jesus says, okay, who cares what anybody else says? Amen. I mean, like for me, I'm sorry to you guys. I don't care what you think about me. I care about what Lord Jesus Christ thinks. Yeah. If I'm right with the Lord, I know everything else will just work out, like Romans 8, 28. You're not going to ruin my day. You're not going to make me lose sleep. Why? You're not that important to me when compared to Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, right? And afterwards, of course, you know, Lord Jesus Christ first, and then, of course, you pray for your neighbors, right, your brethren, right? You know, you think about it like that. That's why order is backward. If you put Lord Jesus Christ first, you shouldn't have any worries. But you start putting others first, you start worrying. Oh, how does she think about me? How does he think about me? You know, at church, you know, how does he think about me? How does she think about me? What that sister, what that brother, who cares? I mean, if you're right with the Lord, why do you care, right? I mean, they don't talk to you, who cares? They talk to you, who cares, right? I mean, either way, if you're right with the Lord, you shouldn't let those things, and I know those things don't bother you, right? Why do you have to have human beings' approval? to find happiness in your life. Why? 
shouldn't you just need Lohr's approval? If you have Lohr's approval, you gotta be connected with people who only cares about Lohr's approval. Amen. And you guys will have great fellowship together. If you only care about human beings' approval, you gotta be connected with human beings, right. people who only seek human beings' approval. And just like that, you know, funny story where girls are sitting down and gossiping. One girl leaves to go use the bathroom. They start gossiping about her. She comes back, and then she, another one leaves gossiping about her. And then, you know, everybody, you know, they hate each other, looking at each other, right? That's how you behave as a Christian when you only think about what others think and you think about what Lord thinks secondly. You have to change your mindset. Then you have to ask yourself, man, am I truly right with the Lord today? Am I right with my Lord Jesus Christ this morning? Do I have right relationship with him? Are there any sin in my life that is hindering my relationship with Lord Jesus Christ? Have I been letting those triggers in my life control me where it overtakes my life and it's ruining my relationship not only with Lord Jesus Christ but with my wife, with my husband, with my children, with my co-workers, with my friends. If it is happening in your life, then it is time for you to get right with the Lord. God is merciful. Thank God for that. The Bible says if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Who can promise that except Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Who can promise that except God Almighty? Yes. I mean, He says, or if you're truly sorry and if you repent, I'm going to forgive you. It's white as snow. Obviously, you reap what you sow, right? So you still have to pay for it. Because just like this, right? You know, you stole something and you got arrested. And you had to go to prison. And you're clean. You pay for everything. But you, you had to pay for it. You had to be in prison for how, however long the sentence was. We got, like, you're clean. You know, at the judgment seat of Christ, you will not remember. Right? However... Or you that caused that problem. So you have to pay for it. Because he's fair God. That's why sooner you do it, the less you have to pay. Less you have to worry about. I feel sorry for anybody who's living in sin, hiding their sin problems from people, even though deep inside you know that God is recording everything, God is watching everything. Christ in you, which is a mystery, I mean, holy temple, yes. I mean, you're not getting away with anything. And you think that God's not going to, you know, put a hammer down and punish you for your wicked ways? You're badly deceived by the devil. And one day, you regret it for the rest of your life. And one day, you might never be able to get up. Now, there's a degree of punishment, right? When a little kid disobeys their parents and parents says, you know what, don't do it. If they stop, it ends as that, just a little worse. Continue to do it, okay, discipline, right? Maybe you get hit on the head, right? Your butt or something. You continue and continue and continue. You get timeouts and everything. There's heavier, more severe actions that comes along with it. Yes. And as you are playing with God and His you know, mercy and grace and you're toying with your sin, what's happening? You're building it up. Oh, yeah. And I think that's one of the scariest things. You're building your own punishment more and more. Amen. What do you think is going to happen if your sin is like, it fills up this whole room? How are you able to 
handle it. And the worst part is that not only you, it affects your family. It affects people around you because of your sin. Yes. If you're just you and you just ruin your life, it's good. You just do your own thing and, you know, just destroy your own life. However, it doesn't end there. It's going to affect your family. It's going to affect the church. It's going to affect the brethren. It's going to affect other people. Have you ever thought about that before you, you, like, you commit sin? Have you ever thought about you know, how much of a negative, bad effect your sin will have, not only on your own life, but others in your life? Have you thought about grieving the Holy Spirit? Have you thought about how sad Lord Jesus Christ will be? Have you ever thought about all the grace and mercy God has given you and shown you? Have you have just forgotten all of that? And you just become so selfish? You're like, I don't care. Attitude. You know. Have a I don't care attitude, right? Devil will use you mightily and greatly. I think that's like the worst answer. I don't care what you think. I mean, I mean, like, I mean, I'm not. It's like I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. It's just about me. And then it's not a person who has a clean, right relation with Lord Jesus Christ who's saying this, right? It's always someone who doesn't have right relationship with Lord Jesus Christ and like saying, you know, I live in my own sin, so I don't care. You know, and you don't go in there, you know, go to the beginning of the message and say like, oh, yeah, you say you don't care, you know. But there's condition. If you're right with Lord Jesus Christ, you don't care about what other people think. Yeah. However, if you don't have right relations with Jesus Christ, you should care, literally. What does I don't care do if you don't have right relation with Lord Jesus Christ? Right? It brings only, only, it will just worsen the situation. You definitely should care about your relation with Lord Jesus Christ. You definitely care about your parents, your family, your brethren. Right? Yes. I mean, it, it makes sense. If you care about Lord Jesus Christ, honestly, you know, you care about other brethren because the Bible says so. Apostle Paul, right? He always prayed for his brethren, right? It's just that order is wrong. It's just that you love your flesh too much. And it's just that you always think that you could get away with your sin. You know, that's why. That's why you have problems. That's why everybody who's listening and who's talking, including me, we have problems. We have problem of not being holy. We have problem of not trusting the Lord fully. We have problem. We just have problem after problem where we let sin take control of our life. Yes. You don't want that to continue because the Lord has his own time. And when that time is fulfilled, and if you and I don't get right with the Lord, you will not be able to handle all the punishment, repercussions, you name it. And you will regret it for the rest of your life. And with that, some of you guys won't be sitting here. With that, some of you guys will never serve the Lord. With that, some of you guys will be never listening to you know, Bible-believing preachers. With that, your Christian life, as you know it, it's over. We'll see you in heaven if you're saved. However, you'll be full of regrets for all your life because you did not fully trust Lord to provide all your need, and you let sin come between you and the Lord, and because you just never, never, never Confess your sins and God can ride with the Lord. Man, how sad would it be to see any of the brothers and sisters that 
we know fall away because they couldn't get right with the Lord because they couldn't let go of their stubborn and proud ways because they couldn't humble themselves before God. Let's pray. Dear Father, we come before you as a wretched sinner, only saved by the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're less than nothing, but many times we act like we're something. Many times we have I don't care attitude without even having a right relationship with you, Lord. And we just think that we could hide and get away with our sins, Lord. I pray that this will be an opportunity for all of us to really get right with you, Lord get rid of our sinful ways. Whenever the trigger happens, just trust in you instead of going back to our sinful ways. Help us to truly think about what it means for you to supply all of our needs and what it means for us to not worry. I pray that all of us will get right with you, Lord, and live a life that is content with everything that we have and be a good testimony and be a witness to lost people out there and to our brethren who's struggling so that we'll be an encouragement to them as well. Lord God, please be with Pastor Shrive, heal him according to your will and be with the families and be with anybody who's listening who's going through hardships in their lives, Lord, whether it's physical, financial, mental. Have us just trust in you because you'll provide Everyone's need, Lord, and that is a promise. Bless everything else that's going to happen today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you, everyone.